Yeah, Ashley Wolf, Dixon, Illinois. Lauren Voss, Junior at Sterling, Illinois. Olivia Guerra, I'm a junior at Rock Falls. I'm Daryl Young, junior, senior at Sterling High School. Junior, senior? I'm Ted Morris, I'm a sophomore at Sterling High School. Oh, yeah. I'm Kayla Jakubczak, I'm a junior at Rock Falls. Rock I'm Devin Halfrick, a junior at Rock Falls. Yes. I'm Matt DeLaCruz, I'm a senior from Sterling. I'm Jasmine Krasinski, I'm also from Rock Falls. I'm Dylan Schumann, and I'm a junior at Stone High School. Come on, 12. Any seniors in the building? Woo. All right, yeah. 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 Seniors, 2011. Juniors are better. Juniors! Class yeah. of 12! Yeah. Woo! 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 Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 I was joking, it's all good. Oh, wait, we got one more. We got me. Yeah. I'm Jake Rodriguez. I'm a junior slash senior. Uh, Juniors. Sterling. Let's go, Sophomores. 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 Hi, Dylan. Sorry, Dylan. Oh, you do? Okay. Rock Lobster. Okay. Are you guys ready to get going? Yeah. Uh, possibly. Okay. Can everybody hear us? Oh, never mind. Okay. Can you hear me? No. This is just going to be a party. Yeah. Yes, no. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Hear us? We can hear you without my mic. Houston, come on now. Okay, so I have three questions to ask. Put it in your mouth. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Clap once. Can you hear me? Clap twice. Okay. So I have three questions to ask, yes. The first question is, whom do I value? So who do you value? Anybody? Family. Back there. Oh. Hi Ashley, how you doing? Aww. Hi Ashley. Back there in the corner, who do you value? I value my friends and my family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I value all my uh, friends from, you know, Illinois that I met yesterday. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> and Daryl. So besides friends and family, who else do you guys Not value? Stick outside the box here. <laughs> Teachers, who else? Your boyfriend? Jesus. 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 Lord. Yes. <laughs> don't play with it. No, but seriously, don't play with it. I'll kill you. Youth ministers? Got it. Are you a Christian? That's good. You're the hot. You have so much in common. Yeah. No, you live in that corrupt state in Europe. Anything else? Yeah. I thought you Kayla. I got it. I got it. Jesus is on the board. Jesus is on the board. Anything else? What about school counselors? They're okay. Miss Wood. Miss Wood. We don't know Miss Wood. We put it up there. Miss Wood. There you go. Is this about how it and Mr. Bishop? Okay, as she's finishing that, now what do I value? What are things that you guys value besides people? My faith. What was it? Goals. Goals. Home. Um, pets. More home. Volleyball. So sports. What else? Tonight. My convictions. Money. Ooh, 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 ooh. Money More reach breaking out the big word. Your beliefs. How about there in the back? Guitar, music. Oh. Life. Life. My home. Your home. Oh. What can't oh. you guys live without? <laughs> <laughs> Cell phones. <laughs> Facebook. They're, they're. Oh, you guys are Facebook Internet. junkies. <laughs> Unfortunately. Air. Put air that one out there. Yeah. 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 Can't bring me out there. Anything else? <laughs> no, that's more out of you. Okay, now we're gonna do what makes me vulnerable? Pathogens. So what makes you weak? <laughs> Women. What else? Jeez, you're in love with Olivia. Tanner. No. Marijuana? Put down. And you like Lauren. <laughs>
Oh. Nice. All right. Clap it up. Clap it up. <laughs> Anything else? Alcohol. And Alcohol. Drugs. Yeah, Jace. That makes you work. Jace did. Jace Ward. <laughs> Anything else? Peer pressure. Anybody up here? Any of our leaders? What's something that makes you guys vulnerable? Myself. Feelings. Love. Tanner. Emotions. Tanner. Back in the corner. Tanner. Addictions. Fear. Did you get the opposite sex? The opposite sex. Crack. My friend. Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Tanner. Okay, so I'm sure we all have our own things. We all have different things that make us vulnerable. And um, okay, so we all have the different things that we value, right? I mean, everybody has something that's valuable to them that would really hurt them if they lost it. Some of these, all these things that are valuable to us give us assets. Our family, we put family up here. That's our family support and our family communication. That's some of our assets. And what do we value? Um, like music, that's our creativity. Um, there are different things that we do in our life that sustain us, that keep us going. And there's so many things in our life that make us vulnerable and try to bring us down, right? I mean, we all have that one thing that just makes us so vulnerable and so open to hurt. So today we're gonna talk about um, values and the different things that make us vulnerable that have to do with relationships. Like that. That'll bring us to our next activity. Okay, so I'm gonna give you this. We have here two pieces of tape that are stuck together. I want you to try to rip those apart, okay? Use the muscles. <laughs> okay, <scissors>. so <laughs> how many um, high school relationships do you think occur? Like all kinds We're gonna do the blindfold, just kidding. You keep working on that tape. I was skating, man. <laughs> Remember, he's working on the tape. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Tanner. Did the liquid work? Okay. We need a okay, volunteer. I need, yeah, I need one volunteer. Oh, okay, we got it. Come on, volunteer. Wrap it up. Oh, what's up, homies? What's enough of you? Okay. Okay, close the doors for us. <laughs> they can't hear. We're gonna give you some instructions. Dylan's gonna give you some instructions. Don't touch the mic. I'm trying to turn it off. It's just speak. Speak. put it down. Sit down, speak. Dang, <laughs> hey, man. That's fine. <laughs> Break this stuff. <laughs> So make, just start saying random directions. Tell her to spin around, tell her to go backwards, tell her to go left, right, go forward, go back. Any which way you want. But you guys have to be as loud as you can to distract her. Devin's going to try to tell her to go the right way to go, but he's going to talk very quietly. So she has to listen to him, but everybody else is going to be trying to go over top. Okay? So are you guys ready? It's going to be really loud. Kayla. 
Go left, go right, left, right, left. Go left. Turn back around. Yeah, you better come left. You better go left. You better ain't playing with you. You better get over here. I'm playing with you. You better go left. You better go left. You better go right. Go right. Go right. Go left. Go right. Go right. Go right. Go back. Go back. Go right. on your, your conscience inside and that what you think is right might not be what everyone else thinks is right but you still have to listen to it because if you don't you'll run into a table you'll get lost you get pregnant there'll, yeah there will be obstacles in the way so all right you're getting good yeah all right okay okay Okay, what do youth value now? Like in this, we want yeah, five like, things that you guys, that the youth here think are important to them right now. In the 21st century. Yeah, like right now as you are. Money. Cool. Money? Family. Girl. Girl. Really? All right, hold on. Sam. Money. Bro. <laughs> Lack friends. Anything else? Friends. What do you guys look to do for the weekends? Sleep. God. School is so exhausting. In general. Sleep. Like what do you sleep? We got five. Sleep. Sleep. 
You know, is I, it I any negative doing. things? Sure. What are you looking forward to doing on the weekends? When you're back home, what are you looking forward to doing? She said it. Huh? So we party. 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 Yeah, Hang sports. Out with sports. Anybody in here play sports or anything like that? Yeah. Sports. 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 All right. You don't play sports? About shopping. I know y'all be throwing it in the bag. Come on now, let's get it up. So we have right. party, technology, your mama's music, money. friends, relationships, and money. Girls. I think that's girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I already said that. <laughs> okay, now what do you what are we looking for in the future as a youth? Money. A job. Job? So having a good job. Success. 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 Family? Mm, maybe a couple degrees. No, my brother got a couple letters behind his name. Family? What else? What else do we look on towards the future that we want to accomplish? Like long term goals? Like college? Grad college? school? Life? Hope the world doesn't end? Yeah. What? <laughs> Kick him out now. Children? You, you would have said that. So, like, living You'd life like in general, coke. basically? Having a family? Living? Not right. getting shot? Alright. Watch what happens. We need a volunteer. Watch what happens. Okay, let's watch what happens. We got a question. What you're going to do is hold this stick in the palm of your hand, but you're going to look at what you want right now, at this bottom list at the bottom of the stick. Partying, technology, music, friends. Let's see what he can do with this and balance it while he's focusing on the bottom things that he wants right now. The bottom. Keep your eyes on the bottom of the stick. Let us catch you cheap. See, ooh, ooh, ooh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh he's good. Oh, snap. Oh, 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 oh. Reaction timing. All right, now we're gonna have you try it again. Uh oh, we lost some of our our immediate things that we love right now. Let's get those back on. Now, we want you to look up at the top of the things that you want in the future. Keep your eye at the top. The things that you want. Watching your eyes. Yep, flat. There you go. Ooh, look at the skill. It takes a steady hand. Oh snap. Ah. Was it different? So, how did it feel looking at the top? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Gersang. Hi, Gersang. Hi. Oh, um, it was hard looking at the bottom because you don't, you wouldn't know like what's happening in the top. You don't know if it's gonna fall down or something. Um. When you look at the top, it's easier because you're looking where it's going to fall down and you're sure that it's which way it's in your hand. Thank you for that amazing explanation. All right. A big round of applause, which you guys are already doing. All right. So what did you guys get out of this activity? I want to know. Please raise your hand so we're not all shouting at once. Yes, ma'am. looks like if you look to the future, you're in better balance. If you look to the future, you keep better balance, right? So what does this mean? So looking at the bottom, kind of wobbly, looking up, you're balanced, right? So if, basically, if you focus on your long-term goals, and it kind of goes back to the blindfold activity, you kind of have to focus in on what you want and go from there, and always have your eyes on the top. Okay, so Blake here, 
Still working on the tape, so trying to get the tape apart, right? Can you get it? Did you look at me? Are, are you working on <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, now, how many relationships do you guys think average high school students have? Four. Yeah? Wow. That's a bit. You straight back in. Where did you go to school? Guys, quiet. 20? Mm, I'd say about three and a half. Three and a half? Like, <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to ask a senior. How many? Raise your hand if you're senior. Seniors! Woo! All right. How many relationships did you have? Two? Two. Anybody else have more than two? Well, if you know somebody that's there, Yes. 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 Friendships count? No. Oh, no, I'm just okay, kidding. so Thanks, we're gonna Thanks, let's no. let's just say that the average high school student has eight relationships. Okay. That's so it's two Jasmine's gonna be our volunteer. So I'm gonna need eight guys up here. So we're gonna we're gonna use. Wait, hold on, everybody, everybody, hold on. We're gonna use. We got Tanner. Can I get? We got two coming up. Here, guys, sit down. We're gonna have them. You guys are All right, we more guys. All right. What's your name? I'll snap a little jungle for you. All right. What's your name? Okay. Okay. Everybody, stay quiet. Stay quiet. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Okay. After that, everybody. That's like 15. That's like one for every like majority in the country. Got the black eye, Asian, Hispanic. Too many. Got a German. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Okay. So, um, the average high school student will have. That's more than eight. That's like eleven. All right. Oh snap! You don't play. We got eleven up here. Twelve. Twelve. We got twelve up here. Okay. How many out of these relationships do you think end up being sexual? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah? Three. Someone said seven. Seven? Oh. Damn, yeah, man. Okay. You say all of them? Call the girl easy. That's dirty. Tanner. How's that going back Okay, back? hold on, hold on. Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you think that the average high schooler, all of their relationships end up sexual. Raise your hand. How many of you think that all of them end up being sexual not relationships? Freshman year, bro. Oh. Not, fresh, not, not freshman year. Not freshman year. Everybody quiet. It depends on your personal values. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, she said that it depends on your personal values. So keep that in mind as we're doing this activity. So, okay. Okay, this Jasmine here is our average high school student. And we're going to say that she dated all 12 of these guys. <laughs> and Girls, like, we're still going strong. Okay, everybody quiet. All right. She, ta she dated all 12 of these guys, and she had some type of an intimate relationship with all 12 of them. So, we have this piece of tape here, and we're going to take it, and we're going to put it on Jasmine's arm. Can everybody hear me? I'm going to put the mic. We're going to put this piece of tape on Jasmine's arm. And then we're going to put it on his arm. I know, I'll be careful. I won't rip any of you guys' hair out, I promise. That's painful. <laughs> <laughs> That's dirty. So keep that in mind, what she said about values. I'll, I'll try not to hurt you guys, I promise. Okay, remember she had some kind of an intimate relationship with all of these guys. Okay, so everybody see the tape? Ugh. I mean, does everybody, can you guys all see how dirty this tape is? No. Delicious. She's gonna, okay, she's gonna take the tape around and show you guys. Ugh. We have Blake, we have Blake over here, so working on our two pieces of tape. 
He still hasn't gotten them undone. But there's hope. <laughs> this piece of tape, yeah, this piece of tape represents marriage. He can't, I mean, for anything in the world, he cannot pull this piece of tape apart. Can I have, I mean, has anybody in here married? How many of you guys? How long have you guys been married? Just shout out some numbers. 35. 38. Hey. 38. 35. 33. Two days. 27. So how long? 17. So you guys have all been married quite a while, right? Do you all agree? How many of you guys want a relationship like this? How many of you high schoolers and people who aren't married, how many of you want a relationship like this? Raise your hand if you want a relationship like this that nobody can pull apart. That's pretty much everybody in this room, right? Now, this is Jasmine's piece of tape. No, this is a dirty piece of tape. This is all these guys. Jasmine's piece of tape. I'm not calling you dirty, I promise. This is Jasmine's piece of tape. Oh, they, they don't even stick together. Does everybody see that? When you have a sexual relationship with someone, your brain chemically connects you to that. I mean, you have a chemical bond that goes off in your brain that connects you to a person who you have a sexual relationship with. That bond happens in three ways. When your mother gives birth to you, when your mother nurses you, and when you have a sexual relationship with someone. And when you keep forming, forming bonds, and forming bonds, and forming bonds, it's not going to stick. It's just like these two pieces of tape. Does everybody see how dirty this piece of tape was? I mean, how much the stick is just gone? It, it doesn't stick together at all. And this all ties back into values, exactly what she said. It all depends on your values. How many of you value a, a positive relationship that you want to stick together? All of us, right? Right? Okay. You guys can sit down. Thank you. Sam, I love you. So, <laughs> how did it feel seeing that? Would you like to have your marriage like that? Like that tape that's all dirty looking and looks nasty and stuff? So, raise your hand if you want a marriage like that. Yeah, I didn't think so. So that's what we're really aiming for in life is that you have to think about the future. You're not just living for right now. I mean, I know it's fun to live young. My last name is Young, so I'll never get old. So, I mean, that's how I'm living sometimes. But then again, you have to think about your future and who you're affecting if you're sleeping around. And not even just sleeping around. It's just you're giving a part of you away. That's the way it is. Like, I once heard a song called When a Heart Breaks, It Don't Break Even. And that song was so true because... When a heart breaks, it's like it doesn't just split down the middle like they make it in the movies. Like, oh, we'll just go our separate ways. It never happens like that. Someone's usually, it's like an 80-20, and somebody's feelings get hurt really bad. And everybody always thinks it's the guy that's being like the, the bad one. Like, raise your hand if you think it's usually the guys that break the hearts. It's usually ladies that are raising their hands right now. We're not even mad at you all. Now, raise your hand if you're a guy and you think it's the girls that are usually breaking their hearts. There we go. I like those numbers. Thank you. She said it's more guys, but we know the truth, guys. We know. But no, I'm just, let me get back to what I'm supposed to be talking about. And the thing is that a relationship, it's not about who does what. It's about, like, can you bond with somebody? Can you, can you see yourself? Don't just think about, oh, can I see myself with that person for the night or tomorrow night? It's about, can I see myself with that person for the next 20 years? Can I see myself trying to start a relationship, something serious? Can I see myself trying to buy a house with this person? Not just, oh, can I take you back to my house and, you know? You know, we all, we'll, you fill in the blank if you know what I'm talking about. So let's just, you know, don't live for the moment because that's how AIDS, that's how all these diseases are floating around in America and everywhere because people are living for the moment and, if, and they think it feels good to just have fun and do what you need to do, but really you gotta welcome to reality when you, you know, because it could happen to anyone. So just be safe, that's all I got. One of the reasons that our um, young people are as serious as they are about what they're doing is because we know that in our own community, the divorce rate is 80%. Dang. We also know that in where we live in Sterling, Rock Falls, and Dixon, Illinois, that our teen pregnancy rate is higher than the rate of the whole state of Illinois, the average rate of the whole state of Illinois. Okay.
okay? So we're, so we're really serious about what we're doing because we realize the impact of what we're teaching and what we're talking about and how it's impacting our community. Okay, so we, that's why our kids are really serious about, the, about what they're presenting here. So um, thank you for your, your good attention so far. We'd like to have, whoop, question. Okay, question. talk about that in just a second because I'm the red flag lady but we're gonna uh, have a couple of our boys come up uh, Nathan and Dylan come up and talk about our t-shirts we just want to uh, thank everybody give our blind group a hand up here my teenagers our teenagers up here. right and Rock Falls, we have this group called BLIND, and it stands for Building Lasting Impressions That Never Die, and what we do is basically, it's like improving morals in our, in our high schools, and the way we do that, well, at least one way we do that, is um, we have this thing called a six-week training, and we take as many kids that want to and we bring them to this building, and um, each week there's a different theme to the session. Like one week it might be presenting or preventing unhealthy relationships, like it is now. Another week it might be like the suicide talk, or another week it might be like, um, yeah, like um, just like sharing information with people just to like get a get a closer bond with them, and. What we come like we come away from that just feeling really close to everyone, and it makes our our whole school like less bully. -y. I don't know. I don't want to say bully free because it's not, but I mean it definitely helps, and it creates really strong bonds throughout the whole community. And um, also, we have we started up a youth center called GPA, Chance for Giving Power to Adolescents. And um, actually at the last year's ASIC convention in Cincinnati is when it all started, so we've been going for a year. And we just got our own building and we just painted it. And um, we held our first couple of events. We had a lock-in where um, kids from the four surrounding schools in our area came and we stayed for the night, played games, played ping pong, did whatever. And then we had a, um, a black light dance where kids from the four areas came again. And, uh, yeah, let me get to that. Yeah, but um, both those have been really successful, and, and um, our next event, we plan to have a New Year's Eve dance and then lock-in, which I think plays out well because it's a Friday night, so instead of kids going out and partying, doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, they're gonna be in a safe environment in the youth center with kids from surrounding schools, so they're staying out of trouble and they're getting to know, they're breaking down the barrier because we have a big rivalry between Rock Falls and Sterling and... Uh, well, my name's Irene. I work for the YWCA in the Sauk Valley. And we have brought 19 kids. We have four schools that are involved in blind, but three of them are represented here today. We have nine agencies, including 
probation, the YWCA, YMCA, um, business, small business owners, nine of us are here, adults, are representing our community to come share with you what it is we're trying to, how it is we are trying to deliver assets. If you think about assets as a model, we have to have some way to, like a pizza man, knock, 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 get them to the students so that the, the, to the people and the adults so that they can use them and change our community. If we can take a look at the statistics in our community, I challenge you to take a look at the statistics through your health department and your public officials in your community and decide where's the gap? What are we missing? Because we know what the problem is. And I love assets personally because I work in a domestic violence program and I work specifically as a child caseworker. So I get to see the kids and work with the kids every day who are living in, I'm sorry, forgive my language. I have cleaned it up a little bit. It used to start with F, S, but now it's poop soup uh, <laughs> that the kids have to live in every day. Doesn't matter if they get an order of protection. Doesn't matter if they remove themselves out of the situation and the parents do the right thing. They have been traumatized. Kids are living in fear every day. And what am I gonna do about that? If I have an 80% divorce rate in my community, I have to assume as I go into schools and do public assemblies, small groups, and talk as much as I can about public education through the YWCA on domestic violence and dating violence prevention, I'm just going to assume that none of you, not one of you, have ever seen a healthy relationship done right. I can talk about the problem and shock value, tell you all the bad things that are going on, but I love assets because it gives us a positive way. It shows us what's working. What can we do more of? What can we do about this? And it does kind of give you a sense of something bigger than yourself. And who doesn't want to be, if you don't want to be a part of nothing bigger than yourself? Mm, I didn't think so. Everybody wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And the kids have kind of taken the mantle and gone forth before us and are showing us the way. The GPA has a student government. The township is sponsoring them, really, our uh, township government, and showing them how to put together a council, a president, how to take minutes and uh, meetings, and showing them some of the uh, character-building qualities of leadership. And the BLIND program is doing a wonderful job. It is my pleasure to, to partner with the YWC, the, for the YWCA to partner with these kids who are showing us the way and telling us what they need and telling us what they can do. I definitely encourage you guys to get to know our kids. They are the phenomenal. There's a bunch of them more. They're just representing, they're a small group representing a really big group back in Whiteside County, Sauk Valley area. But what I'm here to do, again, there's a hotline phone on my desk. It rings, sounds like a school bell every time. We're there like the police, YWCA, and we deal with unhealthy relationships. I want to point out to you some of the red flags that kind of get us off our path. We were talking about our values and what's important to us and our goals for the future, but like my sister in the back, you saw that movie that I'm dying to see, it just came out this weekend, Tyler Perry. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she already saw it. But um, the idea is that it is a fact. I got married, I was in college, I was working two jobs, doing everything I thought I wanted to do out of my life, I was doing the thing, working and getting everything done the best I could, but I was tired. I was exhausted, and usually when we get ourselves to that place of exhaustion, we will fall for anything. And that's exactly what happened. I wanted somebody to help me, stand alongside me, support me, be in a relationship with. Yeah, I was probably lonely. I didn't really think that I was lonely. I didn't have enough self-awareness to know what my body was telling me, what my emotions were telling me, and I highly recommend that you pay attention to this next little section because how much time do I have? Anybody know what time it is? 11.30. They gave me 15 minutes, I'll try to make it fast, so I would start you hollering at me if we get close, because I could do this all day. All right, <laughs> what happens is, when your needs aren't getting met, I'm gonna have my volunteers pass out Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Has anybody heard of Maslow? High school, you should be able to remember him from psychology or science class. Mm -hmm. uh, but Maslow talks about a hierarchy of needs. You need basic creature coverage. You need to have three hots and a cot. <laughs> you absolutely have to have those things. He has made a triangle of your needs. At the very bottom, you need to have sleep. You have to eat, which also means you have to poop. That's been a theme all week, sorry. We've been hanging out with teenagers. <laughs> Everybody does it. You have to have sun. Otherwise, there's no vegetation to make oxygen so you can breathe. You have to have, they have scientifically proved, you have to have touch. 
I won't get into the science behind why that, but some the contact with other human beings is an absolute need, and the term failure to thrive for an infant that does not get physical contact is real. Children die without touch. So your human body was hardwired to need that a, a contact with another human being. At the very, very, very bottom is your very, very basics. Food, water, sun, very basics. Above that is safety. Whoops. Before you can even think about getting the house, you got to eat. So you're going to get clothes to cover yourself. You're going to get to protect yourself from the elements. You're going to get shoes. You're going to get a house. Something to protect you from the outside and your belongings from the outside. Feel safe in that security. Your parents usually provide all those things, although I work with kids who sometimes their parents aren't very good at that. It's hard to do that for your child when they're in jail for beating up their wife. <coughs> but the next one on there, above that one, is affiliation. This is a need. So every time you make a relationship, whether a bond with your family, sometimes our families are not the people who we were born to, but that's all right. The definition of family did not say it had to be the persons you were born to. It's the people who support you and give you what you need as far as a relationship. And if I was a new person and this was my new class and I'm coming to school and I walk into the room and I don't see anybody, I scan the room. How do you feel being a new person to not have an affiliation with somebody? Do you feel vulnerable? Yeah. It's not a good feeling to be that person. When you don't have your affiliation need met, Lord have mercy, it's scary what people will go out and do to get that met. People join gangs, you've heard that term before, gang affiliation. When you're not having healthy relationships in your life, you will go find some place. And they're usually providing you with the tier right below it. Because you have that sense of insecurity, vulnerability, you don't feel safe. So you start to revert and get more and more naturalistic, more and more flesh, I guess. You could go back to your natural nature and protect yourself and start building your hierarchy of needs. When you don't have that affiliation need, which I was in college, did not have that. I mean, I had friends, but I was working hard, thinking I'm doing all the right things. I had goals, I knew what I wanted. I was going to class getting good grades. But I didn't have that affiliation need met. It was a little scary for me to know that in the hindsight, when I look back, man, how many of you kids here today are getting that need met? I didn't look like, what does an affiliation deprived person look like? I looked like I had it together, but on the inside, something was going on and I wasn't listening to the red flags. So when you want love, affection, that you need to define for yourself what it is that you need, hierarchy needs. Maslow says this is what a human needs, but you need to put, scratch out Maslow and put your name. What do I need? And I'll tell you, the first thing you need to do is define love. Because all of the definitions of love, if I had you guys write down, I guarantee they'd be all different. In a generic sense, they'd kind of be the same. But everybody's definition of love is different. And if you do not have an, a, a firm grasp of what unconditional love, no matter what it is, not Jesus. I love you if you do this for me, not I love it when you do this for me, Jesus. not uh, I love you if, that is not love. That is not love. Oh, they want to spend so much time with me all the time. They, want to lo they just love me so much. Be careful, ladies. Be careful, boys, gentlemen. Because if you do not have a firm grasp on what a definition of love is, you will buy a counterfeit in a minute. I did it. Janet Jackson apparently did it. And I guarantee you, in hindsight, there were some red flags. But I chose to ignore those. It didn't feel good, and I'm telling you now, if it feels icky, it is icky. That still small voice that our friend, was it Abby? Abby was struggling so hard, and we were helping her get all mixed up. Those voices that come in and just bombard us, and we know what our still small voice, our conscious, our still small voice is telling us. We know what's at the top of the stick, what I want in my life, what I'm going for, what I'm striving for. But if you do not have a firm uh, uh, grasp on what the definition of love is, how many people have been derailed towards their goal because of an unhealthy relationship? Let me see a show of hands. An unhealthy relationship has messed up what it is you wanted. And uh, the statistics are scary. Out of 10 children who graduate high school, eight of them 
are in, will have been, and will be in the future in an unhealthy relationship, dating violence relationship. Okay. And the number seems high, but I think it's probably just about right. I'm scared out of eight out of 10 children before they leave high school, the national average just went up. It was six, I believe, just a couple years ago. So I just had to update that. Eight out of 10, and that's not saying that everybody's reporting correctly. Reporting, because a lot of guys do not report domestic violence. Do we guys? No. But how many friends have been, know somebody right now? I ain't seen that dude since he got a new girlfriend. I ain't seen that heifer since she got a new man. I don't know where she's at. I want it right now. I want to see hands. I like to know who's mad at somebody right now because you ain't seen her since she got a new man <laughs> or him since they got a new dating. But it happens when we use words like whipped. Oh, he's whipped. Sprung. He's sprung. Uh, see, you see, that is an unhealthy relationship. Period. If you can't have friends, you don't have, you're not doing the things that you are always doing and you have a relationship, there's three things that happen. Either it's me doing everything in this relationship, putting myself wholeheartedly in the, into the relationship, and this was me. Personally, this was me. I was willing to do everything to keep this relationship going into the future, dragging it all the way there. And I was tired and I looked tired. Or it's the other person and you're sucking the life out of them. I don't know, none of you guys look like you'd be sucking the life out of anybody. Emotional needs getting met and everything I need, I want, I feel is more important than anything else in the other person's life. I hope that's none of you. Because every one of us have the potential to be an abuser. Every one of us. You don't know me. I could go home tonight and abuse my children. You do not know me. I could teach domestic violence prevention every day and be an abuser just as big. You don't know me, just like Janet Jackson. You don't know, really, how do you really know? We all have social faces. And the other one, which is a little most scary to me, is when two people are into each other so deep that the whole world could fall away. And it sounds romantic, it sounds like a romance novel or a great movie I saw one time. But it is not real. Life is real. And both of you need to be participating in life and enjoying life. Or you will find yourself way behind everybody else and everything that you ever wanted at the top of that stick is gone. And you have to start over. And who's going to be there to pick up the pieces? I have some volunteers who are going to pass out some pictures. And now, guys, you can turn it over and write your own, draw yourself portrait on the back. But this is a cover girl picture. Imagine, ladies, this is you, your glamour shots, your head shots for your portfolio, but they're going to pass out a picture to you. Uh -huh. Guys, imagine that's, no, now I want you to imagine that's yourself. Imagine that's a picture of you looking in the mirror. That's your headshot. You're looking through your portfolio. Right? Guys, you can write it up, draw yourself a picture in the back and just use your imaginations. Because I'm going to have you do something for me. That's exactly how I look. That's shocking, right? <laughs> now, I want it to be yourself, because this is about you. What you it's all about you right now. Tanner. Not about the other one, even if you brought your boyfriend to the, to the session. It's all about you right now. You want to, um, what? You turn that into yeah, okay. the greatest movie star kind of show or something? One day no. already. <laughs> I'm going to send it to you guys. I have to put it on a DVD. You guys going to order? You want, you want to send yeah. it? Order yeah, we, you want to send it to me? Gavin. I'm going to have with my you want to send it to me? wonderful assistants. <laughs> Read off some scenarios for you. Um, yeah, you guys get in a straight line on past the microphone. Yeah, text straight it to down. Me. You want to go first? Write it. If, yeah, text it. Okay. I, don't, I don't know how to text it. Um, you're just going to read it off, and what I'm going to have you guys do What's your name? Uh, is take your piece of paper. And every time I'm going to have one of my beautiful friends here read off a scenario. Because some things and dynamics that happen in unhealthy relationships sometimes. Red flags, I call them. Things that sometimes we'll ignore and pretend like it's all good. That happens, that's how love is. That's what happens when you're in a relationship. My mom and dad, that's how they act. I want you guys to really be honest with yourself and every time they read one, if this has ever happened to you or you think it's acceptable in a relationship or something that just happens in a relationship, I want you to take your piece of paper, I'm gonna borrow yours here for a second, and just rip off a chunk. Yep, we have our 
Vanna White here to uh, de demonstrate. Just rip off a chunk. How, the chunk should be about how much you think it would, might hurt or how it would feel. You see, take off a chunk. And I want you to keep your chunks and keep them in a pile. Wait, 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 for what? Keep a pile of those chunks. As we go through these, I'm going to pass the microphone right down the line. Partner is making all of the decisions in the relationship. Where to go, who to spend time with, and what to do. You're not gonna hang out with me tonight because of her. We're not, we're not gonna hang out tonight because of her. That's a lie. No, she's coming with us. Oh, no. Partner is making all of the decisions in the relationship. Where to go, who to spend time with, and what to do. You gotta go? Everybody did that? Okay, next. Monitoring, monitoring where the other monitoring where the other person wait mo other partners? monitoring where the other partner says he or she is going and getting angry if he or she goes somewhere else or following their partner around school or in the community. Yeah, that's stalker. That's creepy. That's annoying. I don't like when girls like where are you? Dave doesn't have that problem. He's already there. Everybody got there. From Olivia. I have a great life. You would have lived All right, turn off a piece if your partner has ever pressured you or um, to stop seeing his or her friend or jealousy oh, as an man. excuse to control who she or he sees or spend time with. I don't know, you want to tell me girls before her? You're lucky, you still have a Right. Expecting that you understand that this is just the way we are, no matter how happy the behavior or demands make you. Oh, this is how they are. No matter how unhappy their behavior or their demands make you, that's just the way you are. Okay, that's, that's a lot out of her version. Wow. You gotta be left. You can tear up your little pieces if you've got no room left. Keep going. <laughs> Have you ever felt bad because of name calling, put downs, or partner making you feel bad about her or himself? Telling your partner that no one else would date him or her, or that your partner is ugly, fat, or stupid? Whoa! Yo! I ain't got none left. No, I know. One more time, real loud. One more time. Have you ever felt bad because of name calling? Like your partner is calling you names, or they're putting you down? Or your partner is making you feel bad about yourself. Telling your partner that no one else would date him or her because you are ugly, fat, or stupid. That's petty. That's, petty. That's real petty. What? Petty. What's petty? I'm just kidding. Damn. So. Okay. Ready for the next one? Taking their monies. Pressuring their partner to give up money or trying to keep their partner from getting a job. Taking their money. That's it. Money? That's it. Look at this. Four jigs. Four That's it. Yeah, Nathan. Good job, man. Power and control wheels. You're taking my money. All right. I have two more. Making your partner do sexual things or pressuring them when they to do sexual activity when they're not prepared or do not want to. Coercing you, pressuring you, constantly bringing it up. So, are we gonna have sex? No, we're not. Okay. All right, and the last one's kind of the same. Thre Ooh, I'm sorry. Threatening to hurt your partner physically or emotionally. Threatening to tell people that they been sexual partners before, kind of telling, kissing and telling. If you've ever had a situation where there's threats of physical or emotional abuse, threats of telling your business, That's dirty. your personal private business, threatening to break up if they don't do something, or th worst of all, threatening to commit suicide to get their way. That's all one. If there's those are uh, examples of threats. <laughs> All right, I have my lovely assistants passing out power and control wheels. The issues and dynamics that I just read off to you are red flags from the least severe to the most severe. That circle, I want you to look at the side that says power and control. 
and put it right next to your pile of papers, the little ripped up pieces of paper that you have left. Power and control. From the least severe to the most severe. All of these issues stem from power and control. If you do not feel like you have power and control in your life, you can't get something to happen, make something happen in your life, or make something disappear or get out of your life, you will use these tactics to get what you want. Every one of us, every one of us are potential abusers. I guarantee we are probably about two or three and thrown a tantrum. We learn it young, how to get what we want. If I go to my dad and say, oh, daddy, or I go to my mom and, here, I made this for you, Mom. I love you. We will use emotions to get what we want. We are human beings. That pile of paper so you have sitting next to your power and control wheel, imagine that is your self-esteem. There it is. What does self-esteem look like? Oh, that hurt my self-esteem. Oh, big, big old chunk of me fell off on the floor. Is that what self-esteem looks like? Does anybody know, could describe what a self-esteem looks like? Maybe an emotion. What does an emotion look like? Especially a negative one. You catch one, build a trap. You know, you, the, you can't see an emotion. You can't see your self-esteem. But this kind of helps you hopefully get a visual of what happens every time you allow somebody to do one of the things that are on that power and control wheel, to do one of the things my friends read off to you. These are red flags, ladies and gentlemen things that I ignored. The first time he didn't show up for a date. The first time I didn't get a call when they said they were gonna call. I should have said, what are you doing? I deserve better than this. Mm. But no, I wanted so bad. I had a need for affiliation so badly and a poor definition of unconditional love. And it doesn't mean that you have to come up in a house where your parents are dysfunctional and have to come to see me at the domestic violence program. I grew up in a house, my parents are still married. I hardly can tell you how many friends that I have that can say that, that my parents are still married. But that does not mean that I have just automatically have a secure definition, a secure grasp on what unconditional love is. You need to choose, make up your mind, Look at your friends, look at the TV, look at whoever it is you can get uh, uh, examples of, oh, that will never happen to me. I'm gonna get my needs out, my hierarchy needs. I need somebody to talk to me nice all the time. I need somebody to be in tune to my emotions and still be able to, uh, to help me stand up, to stand beside me. Because on the back side of that power control wheel, you can put up with possessiveness, humiliation, threats, all kinds of things in your relationship. But if you never, flip it over for me. No, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please, this is what a healthy relationship looks like. We need to know what we want. I need somebody to be honest with me. But for you to recognize somebody who's honest, you need to be honest. do you need to be honest yourself? Lauren Hill sings a song. She's there. They lie to themselves, they lie to God too. So what makes you think they won't lie to you? You get that? They lie to themselves, they lie to God too. So what makes you think they won't lie to you? Some of the warning signs that we ignore is, is exactly that. Jealousy is not love. Ladies and gentlemen, jealousy is not love. Yes, they want it, you want to spend time with them. You need that affiliation need. But you can get affiliation needs met by being in sports, having real, authentic relationships and friendships. And so when you guys go, okay, I gotta go to this conference, I wanna go um, with my school, and my counselor thought, oh, I'd be great, and I, I, I can fundraise the money to go. What do you think about that? Well, I really wanted to take you to a concert that weekend, but you know what? You go, you go. I know it's important to you. You want to go to college. Leadership is your thing. I want what's important to you to be important to me. That's what a healthy relationship, negotiation, and fairness looks like. In case you hadn't heard it, now you know. Because uh, going through this training, hanging out with the blind asset kids, 
GPA, does not mean that you're not going to come across and find yourself, la la la, go dating and everything's going along fine and how in the world did I get here? It's, I'm not saying that you're never...